Okay, hello Cirrus pilots. Today we're flying with the new Perspective software. We had it installed this uh, in this airplane yesterday. I'm going to show you some of the newest, latest and greatest features that uh, Garmin has put together with this latest revision. We're heading to Tahoe right now for the 2015 Truckee Air Show. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, so just wanted to point out a few of the things that we've, uh, we've had uh, upgraded. Now on the PFD we can see that we've got ground speed on the primary flight display. And nice to have that here. And also we've got more features with the uh, bearing pointer options. We can do two bearing pointers again. For, for a while there we were only do, able to do one bearing pointer at a time. So we generally like to keep uh, GPS on one bearing pointer at all times. And now we've just received instructions to uh, hold. We're going to simulate uh, the new holding features. Uh, the holding instructions are November 789 or Bravo Juliet. Proceed direct to Cano intersection and hold north of Cano on Victor 392 at 1 1000. Make right turns, five mile legs. Time now is 0735 Zulu and expect further clearance time is 0830 Zulu. So what we can do is we can either look for it by scrolling ahead and looking for an intersection called Kanyo, or we could just ask them for the spelling and hit direct and put in that uh, phonetic waypoint. Okay, so we've got Kanyo in there now. And it's giving us now the option to activate or hold. So we go down to the holding box. We can tell it how we want to hold. So they want us to hold uh, northeast on uh, or north on Kanyo on Victor 392. Unfortunately, we don't have the ability to dial in Victor Airways here. So we have to know the exact radial for Kanyo. So I'm going to look down at the low altitude and route chart here so we can try to figure out what that radial is that we're actually uh, needing to display. So Victor 392, it looks like, comes off of Sacramento on the 021 radial there. And uh, that's what defines Kanyo intersection. So if we look down at the low altitude and route chart here, we can see Victor 392 if we scroll forward to Kanyo, we can see that it's identified off of Sacramento on the 021. So now when we come back up here, we, we need to dial in the 021. If we think about it, is 021 going to be our inbound or our outbound? Uh, if we're holding northeast, that's going to be our outbound. So we switch that to outbound. Thank you, on guard. And we were told to make five mile legs. So we're going to switch this to distance. Come over here and switch that to five nautical miles. And they didn't tell us right or, oh, they did. They told us right turns, even though uh, that should be standard. If, uh, if they want to give us non-standard, they need to tell us left. And they gave us an expect further clearance time of 0830 Zulu. So we'll go ahead and uh, program that in. Actually, that's a local time. 0830 is a local, uh, and so we need to add seven hours to that, so it's uh, 1530. So we'll put that in. 1530. Oh. Be easy to modify that, and then activate. All right, and you can see now. Uh, the airplane automatically went to Kanyo. We would be climbing now to 1-1000 uh, as we were assigned that altitude, uh, but we're going to stay down here at 9,500 since this is just a practice exercise. And then uh, once we get to Kanyo, you can see it's just going to put us right into the hold there. And it looks like it wants to put us into a parallel entry. So it's going to parallel along for five miles. And it's going to turn back around. It's going to re-intercept at a 45 degree angle. And then it's going to perpetually hold us there indefinitely. Uh, you can see it just offset from Victor 392, but it's good enough for government work. That is going to do the trick. And that's because GPS reads about two degrees 
to three degrees greater than VOR radials uh, around here. If you wanted to fix that, you could. You'd have to go back into the hold. Uh, so you go back into your flight plan and uh, modify that holding pattern. But uh, we'll skip that. Okay, so we'll say we've got that all set to go. And um, now we're going to practice the new attitude and heading reference system failures. So if we come back over to the primary flight display, now we pulled the circuit breaker for AHARS 2 so that we'd be all set up for this. We go over to sensor. If we force it over onto the bad AHARS sensor, then we're going to lose the autopilot. You'll hear the tone and we're going to have to start hand flying it. But now we've got a better display. You can see we've still got a full heading indicator here. So we'll get rid of that autopilot chime. We just center up the heading bug straight ahead. This is almost easier than flying a regular heading indicator because now we don't have to think about heading and wind and what it does to our track. All we need to do is fly the track straight up and down and we're never going to get off center line. So uh, right there, if I just keep that purple diamond right dead on center in the middle of our heading bug and I keep our altitude at whatever was assigned, then we're going to stay right on center the entire time. Now we've lost our attitude indicator. Really, this needs to be the hub of our scan. So our scan is going to go hub, then across to altitude, hub, across to airspeed, hub, and then back up here. And now you can do part of your scan here. You can take it there, Oscar. And you're going to do part of your scan uh, there on the PFD and then back down below to the attitude indicator. You can see I'm a little bit off course here, so I need to make a correction a couple degrees back to the left. Otherwise, I'm going to start deflecting on this course deviation indicator. You could pretty easily fly a GPS approach now with this failure, and it's really a, a piece of cake. There's not much to it, and it makes flying an instrument rating a lot easier because you have to demonstrate a, um, a true failure of your primary flight display. And if we have a PFD failure on this airplane, it's so easy to just throw the PFD up onto the other side, take a look at the MFD side. Now uh, we could have a full PFD on this side easily enough on the MFD. But uh, in order to do the true simulation of an attitude and heading reference system failure, uh, they do have to be able to kill your AHARS and have you fly that. Now it's just set up the hold and so we would go into the hold with a parallel entry. This is a pretty bad uh, worst case scenario having to hold after an attitude and heading reference system failure. It's never going to happen. Uh, the odds are you're still going to have the ability to receive a radar vector and you wouldn't have to fly a hold. But uh, there is potential that you could need to shoot a GPS approach if you didn't have enough uh, fuel in order to get to a VFR location. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you guys have a great day. Hopefully, hopefully we see a few of you up at the Truckee Air Show. If not, maybe Oshkosh.